It's big brain time. Let's grow those noggins! <laughs> what a massive noggin! Oh, what's that? That's bad! Well, according to science, I guess, nowadays, size doesn't matter, right? So does that mean Mega Mewtwo Y's huge brain transformation means nothing? And does this mean Mega Alakazam's head staying roughly the same size, but gaining ridiculous intelligence still makes sense? Well, that's right! A recent study has been looking into the details correlating brain size and cognitive abilities. And thanks to that, we can have an actual discussion about Pokémon's stupid brain differences. From Alakazam's relatively normal-sized head to Mega Mewtwo's elongated head. Then there's Orbeetle. Orbeetle's a bug! Do, do bugs even think? Plus, Flabebe. It's the smallest Pokémon. It's got such a tiny head. It's got to have the smallest brain possible, and yet it can learn psychic moves from TMs and isn't anywhere near the dumbest Pokémon. So does this mean Alakazam isn't smarter because of its head size, but because of something else? There are plenty of Pokémon with heads bigger than Alakazam's head, like Wailord. Is Wailord a secret genius? <laughs> Maybe that should be the clickbait thumbnail. Speaking of brain health and stuff, the show is Noggin, right? So what can you do other than watch this channel to expand your knowledge and your brain? Well, did you know that reading just 15 minutes a day does wonders for brain development if you're young and brain maintenance and health when older? Even better when the thing you're reading makes you contemplate and learn things, which is what today's sponsor wants to help all of us with. It's Blinkist. It's a busy world, and sometimes you just don't have the time to read all of the page fluff found in nonfiction books, but you still want all of the important information that's in there, but not just in some bullet point layout, but in a format that's still interesting to read. And that is what Blinkist is all about. Entire books condensed into 15-minute little blinks worth of reading, saving you time and money. And they even come in audiobook format. They come in all sorts of categories too. Technology in the future, philosophy, self-improvement, financing, and my favorite, nutrition. Having read some of these books in the past and comparing them to the blinks, yeah, it does an excellent job getting all of the highlights condensed down, so I absolutely recommend checking them out with the link down in the description. The 7 day trial is completely free, and you can cancel at any time, so if you're curious but unsure, there's nothing to lose. Expand your knowledge in like the blink of an eye with Blinkist. The first 100 people to use my link in the description will even get the full membership for 25% off. Brains are the most complex machines we know of and we've made a lot of assumptions about them that are probably wrong. We see those big brain memes of people being smart or even transcending all the time. But how true is that? I'm, I'm sure size matters, but how much? I mean, think about this. Small insects have small brains, meaning they should in theory have less cognitive ability, yet many insects are able to socialize to a large degree, and they are able to construct structurally sound creations, nests with chambers and secret passageways. They have dance-based pseudo-sign language to explain complex directions. Some insects even have smaller social groups and cliques within the nest, allowing some into their friend group and shunning some fakers. And here, I've got a brain, a million times larger than their entire bodies, but when I find myself in large groups, I shut down and get the big sad. Why is that fair? Well, the basis of this idea comes from Charles Darwin himself. It is certain that there may be extraordinary activity with an extremely small absolute mass of nervous matter. Thus, the wonderfully diversified instincts, mental powers, and affections of ants are notorious. Yet, their cerebral ganglia are not so large as the quarter of a small pin's head. Under this point of view, the brain of an ant is one of the most marvelous atoms of matter in the world. Perhaps more so than the brain of man. What he's saying is that ant brains might be more efficient than our own human brains. But... Are ant synapses worth more? Uh, a simple explanation of a synapse is a connection between two neurons that allows neural activity to be transmitted. One thing that does make humans unique is just how many connections we have between neurons. Yet, ants are still somehow more efficient. 
are their individual fewer brain connections somehow worth more than our own? But why are their brain connections worth more than our own connections? It's like the US democracy thing. One voter in Wyoming is worth 57 voters in California because the US is the land of equal opportunity. California is more powerful overall still, like human brains versus ant brains, but Wyoming here is 57 times more efficient like with ant brains. Yes, I'm insulting Wyomingans, but there's like four of you, so... <sighs> and if we look at computer technology, this is also true. Just 50 years ago, computers were the size of entire rooms, but these days you can fit multiple buildings worth of those old computers into your pocket. Heck, these days we make them bigger just so you can have a bigger screen. We could make them a lot smaller than they actually are. Unlike Metagross, who just keeps getting bigger. However, now, brain size isn't entirely worthless. In fact, brain size can help cognitive ability. It's just so slight. So slight, in fact, that it's hard to measure, especially because humans are so vastly different in terms of size differences. But typically, the human brain is almost three pounds of salty, salty, jiggly fat, with the density of water, roughly. And brain size can vary greatly. And typically, a human brain on the larger side may help, giving it a power increase, in quotes, so many quotes, by 9 to 16%, if you compare, like, the largest of human brains versus the smallest of them, fully developed, of course. So to a point, size matters, but it's so negligible that it really doesn't even matter within our own species. But if we compare that to, say, a honeybee, which is one million times smaller than us, are we one million times smarter than they are? It turns out, honeybees can recognize faces, communicate the location and quality of food sources just by shaking their butts, i.e. the waggle dance, plus they can navigate complex mazes with the help of cues they store in short-term memory. Even a single scent is enough for them to go back and find the source. And that all seems pretty smart to me. Some Plenty of people have a hard time remembering faces. But I can stand here and talk words all day. But let's back this up with some numbers. If we're talking big brain, we're talking sperm whales. The sperm whale has the biggest brain in the animal kingdom with an average weight of nine kilograms with over 200 billion neurons. But what does that even mean? The neuron is the basic working unit of the brain, a specialized cell designed to transmit information to other nerve cells, muscles, and gland cells. So the basic idea is that the neuron is what makes your brain think. Sort of. Human brains vary between 1250 and 1450 grams and have an estimated 85 billion neurons. Though this number is sort of debated and there are lots of discrepancies between every individual. But let's just put the honeybee on here too. A honeybee's brain has a volume of around one millimeter cubed and contains fewer than a million neurons. Yet, all of these creatures are social, intelligent creatures, with varying personalities formed within their own social groups to fit their specific niches. But are bees truly intelligent? Well, intelligence is really, really hard to define and calculate. And here's a big question. Why? are our brains so much larger? Why wouldn't evolution want us to have the least cumbersome, lowest calorie usage machine? Evolution favors efficiency normally, right? A bigger brain means more possibilities for damage, more microbes and malfunctions that could happen, literal bugs in our system. Not unlike how our old room-sized computers had bugs because they were literal bugs crawling around the circuit boards causing short circuits. That's why we call computer errors bugs. But as computers got more and more efficient, they got smaller and smaller, and now the literal bugs can no longer just dilly-dally across them. Just like our brains. The smaller they are, the less space there is for foreign bodies and bugs to get into them. And they are less likely to get hit by an attacker. Small brain good! So what gives evolution? Why must it be big brain time for me? Well. It turns out it's not brain. Like, it is brain, but it's not brain brain. Rather than big brain for super deep think, big brain is typically related to sensor processing. And not grammar. Uh, but it can be. 
and it can also not be. Like I said, the science is still not out there completely, but uh, it's not all about brain power, but perhaps brain ratio. The bigger you are, the more there is of you. A simple statement. But for your brain, the more of you there is, the harder it gets for your brain to handle with all of the limited neurons it has. There's so much more information to process in just existing for a larger creature. A good example to explain what I mean is the fruit fly's vision. The fruit fly's brain is rather small since it belongs to one of the tiniest bugs you can think of. But either way, it has almost 700 different eyes in what's known as a compound eye, which it uses to see and immediately react to stimuli. Fast as a fly, they say. Okay, no one says that. To put it in terms the layman, myself included, can understand, you can think of eye cells in the compound eye as pixels, thus screen resolution. And obviously, a computer, or brain, has to process those pixels. Some insects, such as the dragonfly, can have up to 30,000 of these pixels. However, humans, with our cones and rods and stuff, have over 400,000 pixels. That's a lot of times more. And obviously, as any PC gamer will tell you, to play games at a higher resolution, more pixels, you need a more powerful computer just to run the game at the same frame rate that a weaker computer could play the game at a smaller resolution. And that's just vision. Now think of all the other things the brain has to do. So you'd think, well, duh, we are smarter than the fruit fly and the dragonfly. We're humans. We have built vehicles, skyscrapers, satellites, engineering feats. But if you go solely based off of size, well, we get outclassed. Whales, huge brains. They should be smarter than us, right? But they haven't invented anything. And if you go solely based off of efficiency, we get outclassed again. Insects, they have invented a lot of things. So again, let's focus on the ratio of size. Maybe that's where humans excel. I mean, human brains are so large compared to the rest of us that we have to be born way early on in brain development. Otherwise, we'd get stuck on the way out. Our brains take up 2% of our total body mass. Sperm whales, 0.17%. Bees, 0.4%. There we go. Humans rule. Unless you count other small mammals. Mice and voles, for instance. Their brains are 10% of their body mass. So it's no wonder they invented space-traveling motorcycles. Oh, that wasn't real? Why well, can Hollywood lie, but I can't. So physically, yes, our brains are so many times larger than their entire bodies, but by ratio here, we're the pipsqueak. Then again, why do animals that are larger need to have larger brains if it doesn't help us be smarter? Well, on top of many larger animals having much more advanced eyes, we also comparatively have to move a lot more muscle cells and feel more with our much more abundant nerve cells. We have a much larger surface area than these tiny little mice. If you know what I mean. So our brains have to be a lot bigger just to reach the baseline of existing as big as we are. Our nerves take up more volume, so our brain takes up more volume to process the greater volume of information. That's why, generally speaking, body mass dictates the size of your brain. Your actual brain tissue needs to compensate for all of the new calculations of sense. Plus, you need redundancies to make sure things like your eyes aren't deceiving you, meaning you need even more neural tissue to double check it. And even then, we're still running things so fast that we still make mistakes. Just think of all the times your eyes have lied to you. That's what optical illusions are. And you've got a huge brain. Probably. I mean, you're subscribed, right? So uh, clearly, big brain. So it's not that bugs are smarter than you because their brains are significantly more efficient. They are just smaller so their brains are significantly more efficient. Larger animals possess larger sensory organs, which in turn facilitates a need for a more detailed mapping of the world around the creature. But why then do humans and dolphins and such all have a large brain to mass ratio on top of big brains in general? Does this make them smarter? Is that what allows conscious thought? Is it the ability to think like we do? Just how conscious can each Pokemon really be? What is consciousness? 
the answer is a whole can of worms that I can't even begin to explain. Heck, scientists can't explain that one perfectly either. Yet. Realistically though, according to some studies, it's probably for memory storage. If you are a whale swimming around in the ocean, you need to store all that juicy gossip you heard about Whale Mina and what she did to Wad. You gotta remember entire family trees and family structures over the course of a super long lifespan. Though that's not to say that bees don't have gossip, it's just that they forget their tea as soon as they put it down. Just like most people. Interestingly, longer term storage is a specialty to big brains. And when I say big brains, I mean big relative to the mass of the rest of the body. Again, it's not the size, it's the quality. And this quality is found typically in social animals, like humans, whales, dolphins, meerkats. You know, things that live in a society. Bottom text. Though, again, this isn't a hard truth. In the case of whales, their brains are used mostly for relations between whales and other whales. As we can observe, the whales with larger brains typically are more social and coordinated, with intricate social relationships, and smaller brained whales, while still very smart, tend to be less coordinated, acting as a disorganized group rather than a perfect society of stupid fish. And the same goes for all the small brains. Ants. They are social creatures too. So why tiny brain and not big? Are ants even smart? Ants can get lost. So... Tiny brains? Well, here's a finding of a hilarious study. Ants only know how to get back to their nest by counting their steps. If you attach stilts to the legs of an ant while they are away from home, thus making their legs longer, they will walk right past their home on the way back since they were counting the steps. And since their steps are bigger now, you know, 100 steps that are a foot far is a lot shorter than 100 steps that's a foot and a half far. That's a, probably a really huge ant, I just realized. I probably should have said, like, micrometers or something. So the ants aren't using complex visual clues of what their home looks and smells like, but they're remembering how many steps they walked away from it. It's kind of creepily mechanical, isn't it? And if you keep them away from their home for three days, they will have absolutely no idea where to go or what to do. That seems to be the limit to their memory. Could it be that ants' brains are much more streamlined than our own? Have they uncovered the secret to a mega mind in a small casing? Again, no. Brain size means nothing at the end of the day. Even the smallest nervous systems, such as the nematode Cynorhabitus elegans with its 302 neurons that are still capable of associative learning, all we really know is bigger sensory organs necessitate larger amounts of neural tissue to evaluate the information, providing more sensitivity and detail, but not necessarily higher intelligence. Nearly all of the molecular components of neurons are present in most vertebrates and insects. They work all the same. They have the same qualities. And for all intents and purposes, they are the same. So all that added head that Mega Mewtwo Y gives it is mainly giving it a much larger weak spot. But because its body size also shrunk significantly overall, that does mean more of its brain can be used for non-sensory things. Yeah? Like psychic powers? Let's just apply magic to a science-y video, yeah. And Alakazam and Slowking don't need huge heads to be smart which is why Mega Alakazam's head is still roughly the same size, despite being significantly more smart and brainical. Ultimately though, it is incredibly complicated and we still don't really know much. And that's the beauty of science, its complexity. All of these studies that were sourced for this video basically all concluded the same way. We don't really know. So there you go, that's the video, we don't really know. Hmm. And even all of the evidence that they used, I'm sure there are studies out there that are completely contradictory. So tell me about them down below. And while you're down there, check out Blinkist. Lots of easy to absorb knowledge is found there. I've actually, I've been using it for about a week. It's good reading. While I poop. So until next time, you never stop using your massive noggin.